Teams don't play like the Chengdu Hunters. They don't play their compositions, they don't approach fights the same way, and they're certainly not as aggressive. Teams get lost in the fog of war when facing down the Hunters, and this not only has been enforced by their coaching staff, but has also been reinforced by their regional style. Constantly we see China rely on comfort picks that can even lead into self-discovery of their own style of play, and the Chengdu Hunters are no exception to this rule. It's the safety in their comfort that lies at the heart of their aggression, their compositional choices, and where they take and approach their fights. A great example of another Chinese team adding comfort to their own style of play is Overwatch Contenders 2018 Season 3 Champions T1W Esports. They're a team with an abundance of flexibility and both members of their tank line, Silver 3 and High B, have DPS heroes that they play semi-regularly. This was showcased during last season's 3-3 metagame, where High B actually pulled out a pocket Hanzo. They would also throw out a number of DPS focus compositions from their repertoire, most notably on specific assault and control maps. During their 2019 final against LGE Huya, T1W relied on their comfort and unorthodox strategies to catch LGE off guard with a triple DPS composition on Hanamura. If you think that's just a seasonal thing, here's the team playing a quad DPS composition against the legendary Chinese team Lucky Future Zenith. Something to take note here, where are T1W's tanks? Generally speaking, Chinese teams enjoy playing to their strengths, but sometimes to a fault. That's why you can see so many different compositions during any given metagame in Contenders. This holistic approach to comfort extends to how they approach the game as well, specifically emerging and where they take their engagements. Formerly of Fly Gaming and currently playing with the Shanghai Dragons Academy team, Team CC, JWJ's Farah has been used by both teams when the hero has not been evaluated as highly. Why? Because he's skilled enough to warrant creating set strategies around. Here's a fantastic example of him in action while playing under his former tag of Jason. This clip not only reinforces China's reliance on comfort and playing to their strengths, but also shows that they take an aggressive approach to teamfights, something not as apparent in the West. Chengdu also play very aggressively and would create set strategies with these two things in mind, most prominently on Ilios Ruins, a map they have been historically been very good at. Here we see them set up in an awkward position to take a fight where the Soul Dynasty wouldn't normally expect. This willingness to fight outside of normal convention compounds on the fact that Chengdu also plays strange heroes and compositions. We see this same setup repeated on Ilios Well against the Toronto Defiant. Chengdu take an advantage and start to defend the point, while also pressing forward and taking a fight in positions that the Toronto Defiant have not practiced for with compositions that they have not prepared for, creating a very chaotic environment where the Chengdu Hunters can thrive. And once again, we see the style of aggressive defense on Temple of Anubis Point B and Chengdu's recent win over the New York Excelsior. Chengdu constantly look to brawl and try to stress the mental ram of their opponents by creating chaotic situations in where their very mechanically gifted players can shine. This also reiterates the fact that Chengdu also likes to play comfort heroes. Take a look at Jinmu here. What is he playing? Doomfist. What is he playing now in this current 2-2-2 meta? A lot of Doomfist, a lot of Farah, a lot of projectile heroes, all of which are in his wheelhouse. Now that's not to say their aggressive tendencies always pay off. And to cap off our little exploration into the Chinese style, we have another trend that is consistent with my theory and doubles down on the idea that many teams attempt to take fights in unorthodox ways. This time it comes by way of how they path towards objectives and key points on their respective maps. First, we have Lucky Future attempting to deflect Flag Gaming's Fara Ace by taking a long sweeping rotation towards the point. Lucky Future's pathing shows a keen eye for negating any unnecessary form of poke or splash damage by using the map's geometry to their advantage. This long rotation towards the point forces Flag Gaming to reposition and fight in areas they may not have prepared for while also leaving room for errors that Lucky Future might be able to exploit mid-rotation. Another example comes from LGD Gaming as they attempt to thwart the all-in quad DPS single healer composition coming out from the aforementioned T1W Esports. They take the outside path on Lijiang Tower Night Market and try to force T1W's hand in small enclosed areas. These choke points lend themselves to LGD Gaming's control-laden composition while also limiting the attack paths or T1W's heavy dive composition. Another great example is with Chengdu attempting something very similar to the last few clips. 
Here they're trying to corral the Guangzhou charge into playing on the opposite side of the map. They do this by taking a long sweeping rotation towards the point that also abuses the map geometry in their favor to cut off any kind of widow sight lines and fighting in very enclosed areas to deny any dive attempts. Once in suitable position, the hunters attempt to punish not only the enemy's positioning, but also while they're mid-rotation in setting up for the hunters. And to cap off all three points, we see Chengdu taking this theory one step further with their infamous Symmetra strategy on Hanamura and on King's Row. They use an unorthodox composition to take the Paris Eternal off guard. They take a long and scenic path towards the point that also abuses map geometry in their favor. And once they're on the point, the hunters begin to brawl in a position that the Eternal and many other teams would not be prepared for. If comfort is the heart of the Chinese style, then their tendency for aggression is the skeleton, and their unique approach to team fights is their brain. This logic wheel ties all three of these aspects together, which Chengdu proudly wears as camouflage on their hunt for the Season 2 trophy. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and let me know what you think of the Chinese style. Do you think more teams in the Overwatch League would find more success with unorthodox and creative strategies? As always, you can find my thoughts on Twitter, at Volamel, and thanks again for watching.